Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a 3D Endless Runner in Unity and welcome to episode 1. So this series will be all about designing and building a game in a 3D environment based on an Endless Runner. And it's designed with you, the viewer, in mind. And the great thing is you don't need any prior knowledge or Unity or programming or anything to actually follow this series. I will teach you everything you need to know. So the aim is going to be for absolute beginners as well as people who've used Unity before but would like to learn maybe a few different techniques, see how things are done and just generally follow along. So we'll be going from an absolute beginner level to probably an intermediate and further level of learning throughout this entire series and if you want to see anything in particular please don't be afraid to comment. Uh, we'll be programming in C Sharp using Visual Studio and any assets that we use will be free uh, so it won't cost you a penny to follow along with this. Uh, if you want to see how this series will pan out and what it could possibly look like um, I released a game back in 2020 called Timmy and Mousy and Endless Runner. I will leave a link in the pinned comment below for you to have a look. Uh, this series will be based around that game itself, so it will have a lot of similarities. The mechanics that I built in that game will be used in this tutorial series, so everything should be pretty decent when it comes to it. Finally, Everything in this series will work in all versions of Unity as long as you're using something from at least 2015. And I realise that is quite a long time ago now. Some menus look, may look a little different uh, if you're using say Unity 2020 or Unity 21 or 22. Uh, but essentially everything will still function normally. Um, if you do have any questions about where things are or if they've moved, leave a comment and I will do my best to get back to you. So, where do we go from here? I'm going to assume that you already have Unity installed, uh, or at least the Unity Hub, which is this screen right in front of us. Now the Unity Hub is a great place that you can have all your installs of the engine, all of your projects, and a community, well, I don't think community has actually any use anymore to be honest, but either way, as long as you have the installs and the projects, you can't really go wrong here. So if you don't have any of these, you will need to click on Add and you will install one of these latest releases. Now, I don't recommend installing the pre-releases simply because they are not untested, but they can be a little bit temperamental, I think is the right word to use. So it's always best to go with one of the latest official releases. Now, a lot of people get a little bit confused with how things work, and I always get people saying, this doesn't work in Unity version, blah, 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 blah. Things will always work in any version of Unity, at least in this sense and this day and age we live in now. If you're trying to follow a tutorial from, say, 2014 in 2022, it's not quite going to work. Yes, I get that. But as of recording this, it's now 2021. And if you're watching this in 2023, 2024, everything will work. Um, it's kind of future proofed in some ways. But getting back to the point. I would recommend at least one of these official releases. They are pretty decent. They may look a little different, as I say, but either way, all you need to do is click one, click next, and select all the modules you want. So for example, if you're building for Linux or Mac or whatever, you would just make sure that they are selected, click done, and it will install. Um, so when it is installed, you will have your version here. Again, you can have multiple different versions, so don't worry about installing just one. You can install as many as you want. Uh, as I said earlier, you can use this in any version of Unity. It will work. Um, the next thing that we need to know is projects up here. So you can see I have a ton of projects already, just various different things that I play around with, uh, various different tutorial series that I follow and create. Um, so to create your own, we will go to New, click the arrow, and click whatever version you want to create in. And when you've done that, you need to select the 3D. We don't need to worry about 2D because, like I say, it's a 3D environment. Uh, it's not going to be awesomely mega cool or anything, so we don't need to worry about the HDRP or the URP. So that is the High Definition Render Pipeline and the Universal Render Pipeline. Um, the Universal Pipeline also used to be called the LWRP, which is the Lightweight Render Pipeline, uh, but it's been renamed since. Um, so you would call your project whatever you want there and you would select the location where you want to put it right there. And here, make sure that definitely is selected and click create. Once you've done all that, you'll be presented with this screen. 
So this screen is the main engine that is Unity. So everything you see here is gonna be useful one way or another. Now, for people who have developed before, they may recognize the general layout of this, whether you use something like Unreal or Blender or maybe CryEngine. You'll probably recognize how this looks and understand certain things. But as I say, uh, this is designed for absolute beginners. And we're going to go through, not in great detail, but everything that you need to know about certain sections of this window. So over here, we have the hierarchy. The hierarchy is a way of storing certain objects in text form. What do I mean by that? Well, if we go over to scene view and select the two objects that we can already see there, you'll see that they end up being highlighted in the hierarchy. So the hierarchy and the scene view are directly connected in the sense that we can select objects in both and they will be highlighted in both. So scene view is where we store all of our objects, all of our models, all things like that. So if we had a big cube in there, a big sphere, even a character, you'd see it in here and the text version would be here in the hierarchy. Going along, we have the game view. The game view is a way of testing anything that we've created in the scene view. So let's say we have a small little area and a character and we can move them around. We'd be able to test it in engine without having to build the game. Very useful. Next along, we have the animator. Now you may not have this tab and you may not have the next tab, don't worry, the animator is just a way that we can store the animations that we've created and manipulate them as we need to. We don't need to use that for now. If you don't have it, like I say, don't worry, we will add that tab back when we need to use it. Next, I have the asset store. And if you are using an older version of Unity, I think pre-2020, um, you actually have the asset store working. For versions 2020 and onwards, um, it has been removed from the asset store, but don't worry about that at all. Um, I don't think we're gonna use the asset store too much, to be honest, we're gonna use all our own assets. We may import a few things, but either way, whatever version you're using, if you have the asset store or don't have the asset store, don't worry, we can always get around it. So let's click back onto scene. Over here, we have the inspector panel. The inspector panel is a great way of storing everything about each individual object. So i.e. its location, its rotation, its scale, what type of object it is. Uh, so for example, we have a light. We're displaying the properties of this light. So we're uh, showing the color, we're showing how strong it is, whether it's showing shadows, all kinds of things like that. And each object will have various different um, components. Each section of these are known as components and we can kind of close them up and make it a bit tidier and then open them up by clicking the arrows. We can also add more components if we need to. And we can see there is a massive list of things to add. Not every object needs every component because for example, there is no point adding a collider to a light. That would seem completely pointless, but either way, we'll get more into that as we go along. Uh, every single object must have at least one component and that is the transform component. So every object we place in our scene must have at least a position. It must have a rotation and scale. Doesn't matter what type of object it is, it must have that transform component. The next tab that we have here is navigation and we don't need to worry about that at all. If you don't have it, don't worry. Basically navigation uh, in a nutshell is when we start dealing a little bit with AI, which we're not specifically going to in this series, not to that extent at least. Uh, so don't worry if you don't have that. Down here we have the project window and the project window is basically where we store all of our assets. So anything that we bring into the game can be classed as an asset. So whether it's a script, whether it is an audio file, whether it's a model, whether it's a texture, all of that is classed as an asset and we can store them quite neatly and tidily down here. Next we have the console. The console is a great way of seeing if we have an error in, let's say, a script. So let's say we've written a bit of code, we've missed off a letter, we've spelled something wrong, the script doesn't compile properly. It will tell you down here where the error is and it will also help you out. This console section will probably become useful from about tutorial three onwards when we do start programming. The next one we have is animation. And again, if you don't have this tab, I don't think it appears by default, uh, but if you don't have it, don't worry. When we get around to creating animation, I will show you how you add it. 
Uh, but speaking of which, while we're doing all of this, um, see these little three dots? You can click those three dots and click Add Tab and click the things that you want here. Whether it is down there, whether it is up here, uh, again, we can add them. But for now, as long as you have the hierarchy, the scene, the game, the inspector, the project, and the console, we're all good to go. Now, looking at all of this, you can actually move these tabs around. So let's say we want the scene view moved. We can actually bring it over here and we can see our game view there. You can also uncouple these tabs and make them their own objects. So for example, if we drag game out here and see, we can move it around and it becomes its own individual object. That's quite useful when we want to test a game in a different resolution, but we don't want to build the game. We just want to test it in engine. So feel free to move some of these around and get them in a specific order that you like. So for example, if I bring the hierarchy here, some people do like the hierarchy here. They like the game view here, the scene here. It's entirely up to you. So what I would recommend is you move all the tabs around and get them into places that you feel comfortable with. I'm going to stick with the default view for now, um, generally because a lot of beginners are not necessarily afraid, but they don't want to move things around just in case. So keeping it as the default view enables a lot of new people to Unity to kind of follow along and feel comfortable with what they're doing. So next thing I want to do is go into something called the build settings. So if we go to file and go to build settings here, we can actually determine what system or platform we want to develop for. At present, it is set as PC, Mac, and Linux. You can, however, change to um, UWP, iOS, Android, PS4, Xbox One. Um, but a lot of these will require you to either have a license or download the module. So, for example, if you were to develop for Xbox One or Xbox Series X or S, as I do think they are included now, but I just don't have them here, uh, you would need to get the module. For PlayStation, you do need a license. Um, so let's say you wanted to build for Android, for example. Uh, you could select Android and click on Switch Platform. So everything we are going to do in this series, you can build for any supported platform, whether it is PC or mobile. Um, so here, for example, we are just converting our project to an Android project. You can do it now or later. It honestly doesn't matter too much. Just be mindful that the earlier you do it, the quicker it will actually change over. Now, you can actually create it for multiple platforms. So let's say you've built it for PC. You're happy with it. You've released it. And now you want to put it on Android. Well, all you would need to do is make those small changes in the game that we will get around to, don't worry, and then click on Switch Platform. And you can see now that we are publishing for Android. So I'm going to stick with the PC version. So let's click on that and click on Switch Platform. Like I say, it is pretty quick when you have no project at all, because we don't really have anything. We have two objects and a scene. That's all we have. Um, so yeah, that's all you would need to do. So at the top, we have the scenes in build. Now, what is a scene? I mentioned that about 10 seconds ago. A scene is where we store all of our assets to actually create the game. We can have multiple scenes. Think of them as levels in games. Think of it as that. That's the, probably the best way to, uh, to do that. So um, one thing I always like to say about Unity is it is object oriented, but that doesn't mean there isn't just as much coding. Um, it always worries me. People think that everything about games is just coding. It really isn't. It's about your imagination and what you can design. So before we finish this first tutorial, what I would like to do is quickly add in an object that we can play around with and manipulate and show you just how easy it is to do things in Unity. So let's go to game object. Let's go to 3D object right here and let's click on cube. We just inserted our very first game object, our very first model into Unity. Now, one thing I do want to point out here is it does look a little bit dark. Uh, by default, we do need to change the lighting settings and we will get round to lighting properly uh, later on. Please don't worry about that at all. But let's just make this so as we can see it correctly rather than just have a black face over here and we just cannot see. So let's go to window. Let's go to rendering and let's go to lighting. And down the bottom, 
you will see auto generate. Just make sure we click that. It will get rid of those dark faces and we can actually see everything clearly and light. So we've now got our object in. Remember I said it needs to have a transform component. Well, by default, it has added it. It's also added, to, added a cube mesh, a mesh renderer, and a box collider by default. So everything here represents this object. If we were to turn it off, for example, the mesh renderer, it would disappear, but we can still see this object itself, which is very, very handy. If we turn the collider off, it still does select, but you can see that faded green means that the collider isn't on. Let's play around with some of these settings. Let's move the position. We can either set the position as something like maybe 10 and it disappears, or we can move our mouse over here and move it like that. So our object has gone. How do we see it? Well, let's use the mouse wheel and zoom out. Let's hold the mouse wheel and pan over here. Let's also hold the right mouse button and look around. And obviously the left mouse button will select things. So let's zoom in. Let's say we've accidentally zoomed way too far out and we're looking all the way over here and we can't find our object. Just double click on it in the hierarchy. And there we go, we found it. So let's pan this way, zoom out. There we go. And let's set the position back to zero. We've lost it again, so let's double click. Now, what we'd like to do with this is this is going to become a platform for where our character is going to run. So we need it to be quite long. So we're going to do this on the probably the Z or Z axis. If we look at our game view, we can see there is our cube. So our camera is rendering whatever it sees, in this case, the cube. So we're going to make the cube longer. So let's set the uh, scale to, let's have 20. And let's also set the scale on the X, which is the red here, to 10. That might be too big, actually. Maybe, maybe five. There we go. So if you can imagine, this is the section where our character will run. It will run this way. So what I would recommend is if you play around with some of these transform positions and rotations and everything, move your windows around, get yourself happy uh, with how your Unity engine looks. And next tutorial is coming very, very soon. Uh, and what we're going to do is we are going to add in some obstacles because I really want to get this going nice and quickly. So we're going to add in some simple obstacles and we're also going to deal with materials. Materials are a great way of making things look colourful. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.